So far, we've talked about how models have some limitations. But during the learning, have you noticed that there's oftentimes many different models for the same exact thing? Why do you think this might be? Is one model better than the other? What are some reasons why you think we might have different models for the same idea? Let's start with this model of Tyrannosaurus rex. What's the difference between the model we just saw and this model, also of a Tyrannosaurus rex? How are they alike? How are they different? Here's yet a third model, also of Tyrannosaurus rex. Same questions. How is it alike? How is it different compared to the other models? Why might we use this one instead of the other two? Hopefully you're thinking, these models have completely different purposes. This model is more of a decoration for a home or a classroom. This model is actually life-size. It hasn't been scaled up or down, but it has a specific purpose of being in a museum to give people an idea of the true size of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This model is much more simple and contains less detail than the other two. It's also much less expensive. So, this model may be a great experience for young people, giving them practice in building models and learning a little bit about the object, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, let's talk about some of the different solar system models you've seen during your learning. Here's one of the solar system models we saw. Here's the other physical model of the same thing, the solar system. Now here's a third model of the solar system, also a physical model. And here's yet another model of the solar system. Do you see the similarities and the differences between each model? And why you might use one versus the other, depending on the situation and the audience? Which of the four models of the solar system that we looked at might be best for young people who are learning about the solar system or about how to build models, along with the usefulness of models? Hopefully you're thinking this one. Now, which model might be best for a classroom where students are trying to learn the names of the planets, along with the order of the planets, and see the size comparisons between the planets? Hopefully you're thinking this one, even though it doesn't properly show the distances between the planets. The last two models are more for decoration, and you may find them in a classroom or a museum. They're very useful to show the orbital motion of the planets as they go around the sun. Hopefully you can see that models of the same exact thing can be very different, but they all have a specific purpose and audience, and all of them provide valuable information about some main idea, in this case, the solar system. Now, explore different models of the same thing on your own.